Today, we're tackling one of the most crucial decisions you'll make when crafting your story, choosing the right point of view. POV is the lens through which your readers will experience your characters, your world, and your plot. It's the secret ingredient that can make or break their emotional connection to your story. But with so many different POV options out there, from first person to third person omniscient and everything in between, how do you know which one will serve your narrative best? Fear not, my fellow writers. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the key factors to consider when selecting the perfect POV for your project. We'll explore how your story's genre, tone, and themes can influence your point of view choices, and I'll give you some practical tips for weighing the pros and cons of each POV type. By the end of this deep dive, you'll have a clear roadmap for experimenting with different perspectives and ultimately landing on the one that will take your storytelling to new heights. So grab your favorite notebook and let's jump in. First things first. Before you even start considering different POV options, you need to get crystal clear on the fundamental elements of your story. What genre are you working in? Is it a gritty crime thriller, a sweeping historical romance, a quirky sci-fi adventure? Each genre comes with its own set of conventions and expectations, and your POV choice can either align with or subvert those norms in interesting ways. For example, if you're writing a pulse-pounding action novel, you might lean towards a more immediate, visceral POV like first-person present tense to really put the reader in the protagonist's shoes as they dodge bullets and unravel conspiracies. That's the approach Suzanne Collins takes in the Hunger Games trilogy. By telling the story through Katniss's eyes, in the moment, Collins creates a sense of urgency and high stakes that keeps us on the edge of our seats. On the flip side, if you're crafting a lush, multi-generational family saga, you might prefer the broadened scope and insights of a third-person, omniscient perspective. Of course, genre is just one piece of the puzzle. You also want to think about the overall mood, atmosphere, and emotional experience you want to create for your readers. Is your story more intimate and introspective or epic and action-packed? Do you want readers to feel like they're walking in your protagonist's shoes, privy to their innermost thoughts and feelings? Or would you rather maintain a bit of narrative distance to heighten the mystery or tension? The point of view you choose will play a huge role in shaping that reader experience. A book that puts us directly into the head of a fascinating anti-hero like We Need to Talk About Kevin is going to feel very different from a sprawling, omniscient story like The Lord of the Rings. Another key factor to consider is your story's central themes and messages. What are the big ideas or questions at the heart of your narrative? Is it a coming-of-age tale about the search for identity and belonging? A philosophical exploration of the nature of reality and consciousness? A biting social satire about power and corruption? Depending on the scope and complexity of your themes, you may find that certain POVs are better equipped to bring them to life. For example, if you're grappling with questions of memory, trauma, and the unreliability of human perception, a first-person perspective could be a perfect fit. By filtering the story through your protagonist's uniquely biased and incomplete lens, you can create a sense of uncertainty and invite readers to question the very nature of truth, just like in Gillian Flynn's Gone Girl or Tana French's In the Woods. On the other hand, if your themes are more universal and expansive, dealing with the sweep of history or the interconnectedness of human lives, a roving, omniscient POV might give you the flexibility to explore those ideas from multiple angles and eras, like in Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. So once you've got a handle on your story's genre, tone, and thematic terrain, it's time to start weighing the pros and cons of different POV types. And this is where the rubber really meets the road in terms of crafting your story's unique DNA. Let's start with first person. This is your classic ease narrator, where the story is told directly by a character in their own voice. When done well, 
First, person can create an incredibly deep bond between reader and protagonist, a feeling that we're experiencing the story's events and emotions right alongside them. It's a great choice for character studies, coming of age arcs, or any story where you really want to immerse readers in your protagonist's psychology and perspective. But first, person is a double-edged sword in terms of reliability and scope. On the one hand, having an unreliable narrator who may be lying, misremembering, or simply not privy to the full picture can be a fantastic tool for building mystery and suspense and encouraging readers to read between the lines. Gone, Girl uses this to pitch perfect effect with dueling first-person narrators who keep us constantly guessing about what's true and what's fabrication. On the other hand, being limited to one character's knowledge and viewpoint can sometimes feel claustrophobic or incomplete, especially if your story has a lot of moving parts or subplots that your narrator wouldn't realistically be aware of. As a writer, you have to get creative about how to reveal key information and events without breaking POV. If you want a bit more flexibility and external perspective, Third Person Limited might be the sweet spot. This POV still stays close to one character's experience at a time, but with a slight narrative distance of he, she, they, instead of I. You're still immersed in that character's thoughts, feelings, and sensory experiences, but you also have a little more wiggle room to peek outside their head, notice details they might miss, or offer context they don't have. The Harry Potter series is a masterclass in third person limited, sticking close to Harry's POV, while subtly expanding to show the impact of his actions on the wider wizarding world. We feel deeply bonded to Harry, but we also get to see him from the outside and understand things about his story that he himself might not grasp. And if you really want that God's eye view, third person omniscient is the way to go. With this POV, you're not tethered to any one character's perspective. You can zoom in and out of different characters' minds, hop around in time and space, provide commentary and foreshadowing as an all-knowing narrator. It's a great fit for sprawling epics with multiple intersecting storylines and large casts, like Game of Thrones or Middlemarch. The trade-off is that omniscient can sometimes feel more distant or less immersive than limited perspectives. You're not experiencing the story through one character's eyes, so that close emotional bond may be harder to achieve. As the narrator, you have to work harder to make each character's POV feel distinct and engrossing, even as you're weaving them together into a cohesive whole. There are also more unusual POVs to play with, like second person, which is when the story is told from the reader's perspective, using you, like in Bright Lights, Big City by Jay McInerney. This can create a really intense, almost alienating sense of putting the reader directly into the story. For better or worse, it's not for everyone, but in small doses, it can be incredibly impactful. Or you can get even more experimental, switching between POVs throughout the story, using different perspectives for different timelines or subplots, even blending first and third person within the same novel. There's no one right way to approach POV, and some of the most groundbreaking books out there have gotten creative with bending the rules. My advice? Don't feel like you have to commit to a POV right out of the gate. Give yourself permission to play, to test out different perspectives and see how they feel. One exercise I love is to take a crucial scene from my story and write it from multiple POVs. First person, third person limited, omniscient, even second if I'm feeling frisky. Nine times out of ten, I'll quickly get a visceral sense of which one fits the story best, which one sets off that little spark of magic in my gut. And if I'm still not sure, I'll share those scene snippets with a few trusted critique partners and get their take on which POV drew them in and kept them hooked. That outside feedback can be so clarifying, whether it's from beta readers, fellow writers, or even an editor if you're far enough along in the process. Sometimes we get so deep in the weeds of our own stories that we lose perspective on what's working and what's not. Having other keen-eyed readers weigh in on our POV choices and reflect back to us the experience of immersing in our story's world can help us fine-tune our approach. 
At the end of the day, there's no definitive right or wrong answer when it comes to point of view. Like with so many aspects of storytelling, it all comes down to understanding the specific needs and aspirations of your project. A whiz-bang spy thriller is going to call for a very different narrative lens than a quiet tale of grief and healing. The best any of us can do is approach our stories with curiosity, daring, and a healthy dose of play. Test out different POVs in the sandbox of your pages. Get granular about your genre and themes and reader experience. Gather perspectives from folks you trust, and then take a deep breath and listen to your gut. Nine times out of 10, our intuitive story sense will guide us to the POV that will make our tale shine brightest. One last tip for the road. Once you've settled on your POV, really commit to it. Dig deep into the opportunities and limitations of your chosen perspective and use them to your advantage. Whether it means burrowing into one character's psyche, replicating the you are there feeling of a memoir, or channeling the wise, discerning persona of an omniscient narrator, let your POV be your guide as you move through your story's landscape. Trust that it will work in tandem with your voice, your characters, your themes, to create an experience that readers won't soon forget. And that, my friends, is the true magic of point of view. It's not just a technical choice. It's a doorway into your story's beating heart. So choose boldly and write on. Let's recap what we've learned today. Before choosing a POV, get clear on your story's genre, tone, themes, and desired reader experience. These factors will heavily influence which perspective serves your tale best. Weigh the pros and cons of first-person, third-person limited, third-person omniscient, and experimental POVs like second-person. Consider how each one's strengths and limitations align with your story's needs. Don't marry your POV right away. Experiment with writing key scenes from multiple perspectives and see which one feels most organic and compelling. Get outside feedback from trusted readers on which POV draws them into the story most effectively. Once you've settled on your POV, embrace it fully and use its unique features to enhance your reader's journey. And if you want to take your writing skills to the next level while supporting this channel, I've got an immersive online course that covers everything from character development to plotting to world building and beyond.